This meeting is being recorded. Namaste everyone. Happy Chinese New Year today. Year of the Tiger. Suvandim Bushti Vardhanam Urvaru Gumiya Bandhana Mrityo Mukshaya Mamrda Om Dream Bhagam Majamahe Suvandim Bushti Vardhanam Urvaru Gumiya Bandhana Mrityo Mukshaya Mamrda Om Dream Bhagam Majamahe Suvandim Bushti Vardhanam Urvaru Gumiya Bandhana Mrityo Mukshaya Mamrda Om Loga Samastha Sukhinu Bhavandu Loga Samastha Sugino Bavandu Loga Samasta Sugino Bavandu Om Shandi 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 Om the Sat Namaste, everyone. It is my great pleasure and honor to invite all of you to our Well Interfaith Harmony Week opening ceremony. More people are going to jo join very soon. It is a live stream and recording. Those who don't want to be in the recording, please keep your video off. But I like to have everyone on video. So building bridges across the boundaries. Well, Interfaith Harmony Week is an annual event observed during the first week of February after General Assembly designation in 2010. The General Assembly pointed out that mutual understanding and inter-religious dialogue constitute important dimensions of a culture of peace and established World Interfaith Harmony Week as a way to promote harmony between all people regardless of their faith. Recognizing the imperative need for dialogue among different faiths and religions to enhance mutual understanding, harmony, and cooperation among people. The General Assembly encourages all states to spread the message of interfaith harmony and goodwill in the world's churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, and other places of worship during that week on a voluntary basis and according to their own religious traditions or convictions. Here, we are celebrating interfaith harmony in our own way. We are from different NGOs, from different countries, different faith, and different groups, cultural groups too. La last uh, 12 years, we are gathering in different places and celebrate World Interfaith Harmony Week. I remember in 2000, there was a Millennium Religious Summit at the United Nations happened. That was one of the stepping stone to have this celebration. I remember Baba Jain is going to speak it today. He had a dialogue with our General Assembly President and King Abdullah. And actually King Abdullah from Jordan brought this resolution to the United Nations. So today's our inaugural speaker that is our assemblyman from Yongers. he is a friend of king abdullah he is going to inaugurate around 9 15 he'll join here i want to say hello to everyone 
say hello in your own language. Assalamu alaikum and good morning to all of you. This is Imam oh. Arif who's from Michigan. Great. <laughs> I see Maximo is here, Isabel is here. Buongiorno. 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 <laughs> we like to hear different languages, please. Buongiorno a tutti. Buon dia. <laughs> Namaskar. 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 I saw a message from Reverend Sharon Hamilton. Sharon, are you there? Please on your video. So this is my, my background. I am from an interfaith family. Mother is from a Hindu family and father is from an Orthodox Christian. Then I became a yogi and an interfaith minister with Rabbi Joseph Galpame. I'm a trustee of the All Faith Seminary International and over 36 years, this is a 37 year we are putting interfaith programs. This is a, going to have a final festival on February 28th. So we will have first week interfaith harmony week celebrations. Then we will have physical events in different uh, towns in New York City. We may move around, have celebrations. That's a plan. Then we'll have some dialogues every day in the morning. We have music, art, like a mix of stuff. I, I believe even though some of us are strong religious practitioners, still we have to focus on spirituality more than anything else. Because human beings create all the religions. I, I always say religions are man-made, but spirituality exists in the universe. By birth, we have the spiritual nature. Even in the DNA, we have two strands. That's the thing I heard from an uh, article uh, and some people also mentioning about this one because I didn't see the strand, but I saw the article. So these two strands are very strong. When that works very well, the spirituality will act in our behavior or any actions. That's right. I believe we all are chosen divine being on this earth to love and care each other. This is my uh, mission to bring people together. In that part, I am very successful. We, we connected more than 100 countries. And I have to acknowledge all of the great masters who guide us, support us, and help in different ways. And here, I had to acknowledge our board members. That is uh, Brother Varnas Rajbhushan. And some of our friends and uh, advisory board. One minute. Hello. Morning. I, I, I am in the meeting going on. J just if you go to Facebook, it should be a link there. Where you saw the flyer, it should be linked there. Somebody saw a flyer, but they don't know where's the link. We already put the link and the numbers and everything. <clears throat> anyway. So, la, la, yesterday, I was having a wonderful discussion with the Reverend Dr. Frank Kaufman to have a deeper, meaningful actions for interfaith work in the world. I hope in the future we can cooperate with other groups, other seminaries, other organizations from different countries to promote a globalized spiritual system. This is not a just dream. I know if we put little effort, it will happen. Sometimes we believe only one God, that's great. 
some people believe thousands of gods that great but life is very short that's a basic meaning is life is very short and very hard to find out where is the god unless we practice godliness in, within ourselves this is my humble experience for my personal life uh, chandra suk sukdio chandra are there Anyway. Yes, Guruji, I'm here. Uh, our Namaskar. Assembly, assembly man is going to join or? Yes, he will be joining, but he's in Albany. Oh, he's in Albany, okay. He's, he's in Albany, yeah. So he's he will be joining soon. Okay, 9.15, okay. Okay. Well, great. Uh, I want to see, uh, I have to mention about our advisory board members. uh grandmother patish and davis sir and susanna frank kaufman and i see our sharon from long time friend supporting us and our, one of the trustee from argentina that is tara devi and our director and my long time friend uh, mirta bado she is also here and uh, my, my friends from un Richard Jordan and Lindy are here and Scientology leader Robert Massimo Perino is here and Salet Aquino also here and some other people are here I see so that's great so let us see how it will work out Baba Jain also joining now Isabel is from Argentina. She is here. Mavesper Keridwen. Where are you from? Uh, let me see. Baba Jean. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, I'm from Brazil. You are from Brazil. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, high priestess in uh, Wicca tradition in Brazil. Very great. So I'm a witch. <laughs> so our assemblyman is in capital of New York. He's going to join from there. I'm just waiting for him. So in between, we can have a little chat. Uh, Baba Jain just joined. Dr. Baba Jain is my longtime friend. Uh, the first time I met him at the UN during the uh, Millennium Religious Summit, I was with Sami Bua to uh, attend the program. That gave me a really good boost, actually. Then I was busy. Then later, uh, there was uh, uh, the one meeting happened. I was mm-hmm. in a lunch mm-hmm. in a restaurant called Banana Leaf. And Baba Jain was sitting with his friends. Then the owner said, you know Baba Jain? I said, yeah, I met him. Okay, come and talk. That's it. We became real friends from that. I think that was in uh, 2006 or 5 or something. Hello. <laughs> and Hi, Goro. Good, good. The, then uh, 2007, we had a wonderful uh, peace festival and yoga festival at the Indian Consulate. And we brought the idea of International Day of Yoga in that event. Swami Bhuva was there, Rabbi Gerberman was there, and so many, so many religious leaders were there. It's a beautiful event. Then there on, we did so many events together, be part of it, help each other. That's the way we move. So let me see if our assemblyman is here or not. Yes, I am. Oh, uh, what is your number? I'm just looking. Are you in the phone number or? It's, uh, I'm on the phone in Albany. Uh, oh, okay. I, I didn't have access to uh, visuals, so I'm on the phone, uh, Guru. Okay, okay. So in that case, I'm going to invite our assemblyman. Uh, I'll mention, I had to mention about him. Our inaugural address will be done by 
New York State Assemblyman, Honorable Dr. Nadar Seish Esquire, is from the 90th Assembly District in New York State Assembly. Nadar Seish, a resident of Yonkers for over 60 years, grew up with seven siblings on the southwest side of the city, which was ethnically and racially diverse. After working his way through college, he dedicated himself to being a spokesperson for community needs in education and equitable opportunities for all. This path has, his path has guided him to seek and reach success as a teacher, principal, college professor, captain in the NYS New York State uh, Guard Militia and president of the Youngest Public School Board of Education. In addition, Dr. Sage has also served as a trustee for the New York State Board of Elections, where he was on several committees, including the Instructional Affairs Committee and the Big Five Cities Board. One of his goals in the New York State Assembly is to fight for changes in the New York State education funding formula, which shortchanges younger students and deprives schools of a fair share of the necessary funding. In the assembly, he also works toward, towards decreasing taxes for the middle class while enhancing the job market and the economy in the New York State. It's a long time front since 2009. Very active, very public oriented, a serving, divine being, I'll say, in the political uh, leadership in the america my friend dr nada sage floor is for you thank you very much uh good morning to everyone uh i know we're joined by uh, many wonderful people from throughout the not only the united states but throughout the world and really that's a testament to the special initiative celebrating World Interfaith Harmony Week. And, uh, and I just wanted, as a, a good friend of His Holiness Guru Dilipji and uh, all the members who participate in expanding interfaith to really congratulate this effort and to be, to be a proud member of this inauguration of World Peace Harmony Week. And it's also a celebration of a month long, a month long effort by the World Yoga Association and its involvement with the United Nations and the involvement of many other religious groups throughout our nation and our world to really promote a culture of peace and nonviolence. And uh, for me, this is very special having had the wonderful opportunity of uh, working and meeting His Holiness, uh, the Guru, uh, who's taken a very active lead in promoting interfaith dialogue. It's really a movement that promotes understanding, promotes awareness, cooperation, recognizes that we are in a world and unfortunately, with, uh, with a lack of dialogue that results in misunderstanding, that results in hostility and uh, hatred and polarization. And these are the negative forces that really bring down not only humanity, but bring down the goodness and the soul of uh, people in general. So this week, as a member of the New York State Assembly, I was honored to present a very special resolution. This is a New York State resolution that's adopted by the New York State Assembly and the New York State Senate that really recognizes and promotes this 37th annual, 37 years of ongoing success celebrating world interfaith harmony. And this is really, as many of us would say, a festival of light, a festival of goodness, a festival of uh, people acknowledging the commonality 
that each and every one of us have. And it's really a mission to get rid of the negative polar, polariz polarization that uh, divides us and allows us to enter into conflict. But this effort really undertaken by His Holiness really is a tribute to his commitment to, to the betterment of all people. And uh, as was said earlier, this interfaith that would lead us in prayers and many guest speakers and panel discussions is really a month long celebration. It will involve music and the art and the dance, devotional songs, and there'll be opportunities for questions and answers and at some point, I'm sure an award ceremony, but it's really a tribute to a movement involved in not only yoga, but really the betterment of mankind. And as an assemblyman, I've been very fortunate to celebrate in my district office in Yonkers, New York, you know, world yoga peace and presented special resolutions to a guru and many others that undertook the mission of peaceful coexistence. And I'm very proud. My ethnic background is Jordanian American. And I know that uh, the King of Jordan, King Abdullah the second of Jordan uh, was very instrumental in, in being the first to propose this special resolution at the United Nations back in 2010. And it was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly, declaring the first week of February each year as World Interfaith Harmony Week. And in the New York State Assembly and Senate, it is my, my uh, pleasure to introduce a similar resolution, which would be adopted and again proclaiming the first week of February as World Interfaith. And because when we look around the world, and we look at the conflicts that divide us because of race and ethnicity and the conflict that divides us by gender, by who's rich and who's poor and the social demographics it really is, it, it's difficult to, to acknowledge that with all the negative, that there's an opportunity we can turn the tide and the turning of the tide starts with what you and everyone who's joining in this special telecast uh, is, is, uh, is working on and doing. It's through your participation, your goodness, your ability to uh, explain to people that uh, whether, whether you're Muslim or Christian or Hindu or Jewish or Buddhist or whatever religion you practice, that when you look at the core of all the religions of the world, the core is generally a core of goodness, a core of the humanity, a core of peaceful coexistence. So with that in mind, why should we look at the negative? Why should we look at what divides us? And my goal and my effort and my belief is to work together, to really dialogue together, to bring people of different ethnicities and people of different religions together and to really have them communicate and sing together and pray together and dance together and really break bread in many instances together and realize, hey, I can really like this person. I can really understand this person and really begin to appreciate each other, not only on the local level as we have, but through major institutions, through state governments, through state leaders, through the United Nations, through other world and local societies and organizations that really bring people together. So why is this important? Because sometimes the greatest success that we can bring to each other starts by simple dialogue, starts by someone praising someone, someone honoring and recognizing, someone looking at someone in the eyes and realizing hey, I like this person. I really believe that him and I have a lot in common. <coughs> that his religion is, you know, and the world now more than ever needs many of us to begin to volunteer, 
to really, even if it's to volunteer, to work with a senior citizen who needs, or to go and provide food to those who need. There's a tremendous amount of food insecurity and scarcity in the world. With the pandemic, many people that can't even get their grocery, many young people in colleges that we mobilize to clean up parks and to really clean up waterways and to really go and serve senior citizens or the handicapped individuals. And this is part of the goodness. This is part of the spread of, of goodness that impacts people in a positive way. And, uh, and God knows with regional conflicts and many of them are, are really as a result of, of uh, you know, misunderstanding, many of them, you know, that go to the extreme of uh, bringing about ethnic cleansing and wars that are taking place or would take place around the world are because of the misunderstanding. So uh, I'm very glad, I'm very honored to make this presentation to Guru Dilipji and to all the members of the World Interfaith Harmony Week Committee, the members of the Yoga Worldwide Association, and those involved with the United Nations organizations that support these initiatives. It's really an effort to say a very big special thank you. We appreciate what's happening. And I, as a member of the State Assembly, as a member of government, I, I bring back to my roots, my ethnic roots, my growing up in a community, a large family where tradition and religion and values are very important for me to really jump on board this bandwagon of goodness and uh, this effort to promote world peace and harmony and to focus on commonality, not differences and to really focus on conflict resolution and to really begin to pull back the polarization that has divided us, not only here in New York and the USA, but throughout the world. And to really begin to say, you know, good work, congratulations, keep up the hard work and, uh, you know, know that I will be involved on a regular basis you know, whether this week, the rest of the month in February, and throughout the year and years to come to work with Guru and the many other wonderful people, King Abdullah II of Jordan, who continues to promote interfaith, uh, Muhammad Shahudullah of the Interfaith Center of the USA, of course, my friend, Dr. Charles Shanavaj of the Westchester Council Against Islamophobia, Dr. Frank Kaufman, and the many others that work with the guru, and also my staff member, Chandra Sukhdeo, who's uh, of Indian Trinidadian background, uh, who was uh, really my liaison with the guru. I'm very grateful for this opportunity and uh, to really be able to kick off, you know, and this special inauguration is for me very special and uh, I would cherish it. So Guru, thank you very much. Wish you the very best and uh, God bless you and uh, continue to give you the strength and the endurance to keep working as you have because uh, it is really worthy. And it is, uh, in my opinion, one of the greatest assets of enhancing humanity in a very positive way. Thank you very much, Guru. Thank you, dear Assemblyman Honorable Nadar Sage, for inaugurating this wonderful occasion. And that is a great blessing for us. I want to introduce one of my friends, that is Dr. Baba Jain, who is a close friend of uh, King Abdullah. So I, I hope one day you both can meet. <laughs> so that will be wonderful. He's in uh, Florida now, he used to be in New York. So let, let us see. So when you are coming back to New, uh, Yonkers? I'm coming back to Yonkers uh, actually Thursday afternoon. And by the way, 
two yeah. months ago, I had the pleasure of meeting with King Abdullah when he was at the United Nations. And we, we had a long, nice uh, one-to-one discussion, okay. again, uh, talking about peace and talking about uh, expanding relationships between the USA and Jordan and really promoting uh, a lot of good causes. So, uh, you know, I'm glad he's involved. Uh, he definitely, him and before him, his father, His Majesty King Hussein uh, was really, you know, for many, many years, the Hashemite family were, you know, the protectors and the pillars of interfaith, especially in the Middle East, you know, which, which was extremely important for people of all eth- ethnicities and especially all religions to feel safe and feel wanted. And uh, it's a tribute to the Hashemite family and uh with King Abdullah II of Jordan to continue this effort is really uh, very special. Thank you, Samurai man. I know you had to go back to your meetings. So I'm going to uh, introduce our keynote speaker. That's Dr. Baba Jain. Dr. Baba Jain is a Secretary General for the World Council of Religious Leaders. He first presided as such at the 2000 Millennium World Peace Summit of Religious and Spiritual Leaders. Jain co-founded the Religious Initiative of the World Economic Forum and is the founder of the Gandhi King Award for Nonviolence. He launched the World Council of Religious Leaders Religion One-on-One Initiative. Uh, earlier I mentioned I know him a long time, close friend very active and he did so many different types of initiative, spiritual initiative, Hindu um, Muslim summit or uh, Hindu Jewish summit, like a mix of different things in different countries. Without further delay, I would like to invite Dr. Baba Jay, floor is for it. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Dilip Ji. It's so wonderful to join uh, many, many good old friends. I see the screen, please forgive me if I miss somebody. I see Richard Jordan, I see dear Monica, I see the image of Sharon. Uh, who else Who else is here that I know of? Uh, certainly, the Lipti I know from a long time. And uh, I see the screen of Gandhi King, which Monica would remember evokes back old memories from the United Nations when we, in 1998, brought the season for nonviolence to the UN and Monica was deeply involved, so as was Richard and Sharon. So it's good to see all these things come together. But as I begin today, you know, Assemblyman, uh, it's good to hear his remarks and his support. Uh, two things which I'm going to share on a lighter note and on a serious note. On the serious note first is that the last two plus years has brought to surface the fragility of life as we know it. This, the COVID has, re, re, has changed everything the way we knew it, the way things worked. And today we are reflecting back and seeing what we could do. There are people who are actually going into early retirement because they feel they want to have a quality of life, not just be slaving to work and work and work. The other part is the human ingenuity. This has been such an enormous opportunity for us to retool. And uh, for us, you know, we've done so much in this time that we launched online platform. It's called the Center for Responsible Leadership. 2019, we had our first summit at the United Nations. So it's just been a blessing so that we could really take stock and see what we want to do with our own lifetimes, in our own lifetimes, with our own lives. So going into the assemblyman, he evoked the presence of King uh, Abdullah. I had the honor of meeting His Majesty King Hussein also. But an incident that comes to my mind, because Guru at the Dilip Ji had asked me to mention this to, and some of the experience. I didn't tell you this story. I was a guest of uh, His Majesty King Abdullah in Jordan, as at the royal court. And I receive a call from a very senior officials in Syria. And they knew I was in Jordan. They wanted me to go to Syria. 
So his majesty is there, the royal court people are there. And now here, I had come to Jordan by car from Israel. So my passport has a stamp of Israel. With that passport, I cannot enter Syria. So we are sitting there. So, you know, when you are in a position of influence, anything is possible. No worries. They call the American ambassador in Jordan. Same day, I got a new American passport. Okay, the king gives me one of the palace cars to drive to Syria. And I'm from the way there are many checkpoints. At each checkpoint, they are stopping, they're looking. And I could see they were having discussions. But because I was in the car, the royal court's car, they would let me go. I reached the border of Syria. And then there's a problem. They are going, deliberating, talking amongst themselves. It takes, and your people in Syria are waiting for me. They are on the phone with me, I'm talking. I said, I don't know what's happening. Finally, they said, no, you cannot enter Syria. I said, why? What happened? So I called my friends and I don't know what they spoke, but later it turns out, look how things work. You know, you're going to the royal court, nobody stops in the local checkpoints. But on the international border, they're looking at my passport and they're seeing there is no entry stamp into Jordan. They said, where did you come from? So fortunately, the people on the Syrian side are very influential. The people I'm meeting, they're from the government. They gave me an exemption. So then when I had to come back again, the Royal Court's car was there, brought me back and I shared the story. I said, we have to be careful when we travel with such things. So this was a good moment to you know, enjoy with his majesty and the conversations that we had. Uh, that was one incident. Then there were many other opportunities that I've had. And I, in fact, I think it was in 2003, uh, four, we had our board meeting for the World Council of Religious Leaders in Amman, Jordan. So we had major religious leaders all there with the royal court people. And I saw early on how they respect the religious leaders in Jordan. We met all of them. And some of them are also in the leadership of the Interfaith Harmony Week and the awards that are announced. So we know that. So even though it is an Islamic country, remember the assemblymen mentioned about the, the Hashemite kingdom. Now, according to them, they are in the direct lineage of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Direct lineage, the Hashemite kingdom. So this is deeply into their DNA. And they do the, all this work internationally and promote it because in their own community, I have met people of all walks of life. In Amman, I think uh, in the mid 2000s, I attended a Shabbat dinner in Amman. People don't know that. So the kosher food was brought in from Israel. It was flown in and we were sitting and having Shabbat in there. The next day, I was with the Muslim leaders or the Greek Orthodox leaders or the Anglican leaders. They're all there, all fine. So what we sometimes read in the media or hear in the news is not necessarily the correct information. So never believe what we hear or see. Go and explore for yourself in any of these situations. You will find that. Come to Israel, across the border right there. There are people from every religion there, right? And I can tell you, in America, we cannot speak as freely as they can speak in Israel. There are people who speak so strongly against the government of Israel, but okay, that's their opinion. You do that in America, you'll be arrested. So people try and accuse Israel sometimes of uh, not allowing, which is not true. They are dealing with lots of complex situations. I have been deeply involved and seen firsthand what's happening there, okay? And the, the truth is, uh, in the, not in the last years in the Biden administration, but the, in the previous administration, anti-Semitism went up more than 200%. Since 2000, Islamophobia is up 7,000%, 7,000%, okay? Now there is Hindu phobia because you see what's happening here suddenly, because the Prime Minister Modi is a strong man, right? He's trying to keep the country of 1.3 billion in a prosperous zone and see that it, 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 that root, we, uh, root, uh, root out corruption, which is not going to be easy. So he works closely with the religious leaders of all walks of life. 
just on the 26th was a Republic Day. And if you go to the honors, you'll see how many people of faith were given national awards, national recognition, right? So never judge what's happening around. But coming back to our own country here, remember this is a country where we live in. This is what has given us so much. I have been blessed. I remember that, you know, uh, just after this today, I have to go because we have an initiative which we've been partnering with the Clinton Foundation at Johns Hopkins on fighting the over, overdose crisis. Now, this is an epidemic in our country. Uh, as we talk, since 1999, a million lives have been lost. Last year alone, more than 100,000 people died. So we are mobilizing religious leaders from every walk of life in North America to come together with the leading scientists and have actionable solutions. Those are real demonstrable uh, things that we can launch during this Interfaith Harmony Week to see what we are going to do with the resources that we have. To me, you know why? Why I say this? The greatest resource and the greatest power in the world is religion. Why? Even Pew will tell you, Pew polls, that over 90% of the world believes in one religion or the other. 90%. Tell me one political constituent or any uh, entity which has that kind of support. So the resources of the religious leaders, if mobilized and harnessed correctly, can be the greatest use of power. And they can change anything. The question is, when are the religious leaders going to come together and make sure that they are not being manipulated to divide each of us? I, my you know, mentor, for, I, I look upon him as one of the great leaders of the world. Kofi Annan said this very well at the Millennium Summit. Dilip Ji would remember, Monica would, will tell you. Is, he's, and Richard, you know that. He said, the problem oftentimes is not with the faith, but the faithful. It is in the name of faith that we divide. So the problem is not the religion. The problem is those culprits who abuse religion for their own ends. We've seen this over and over and over again. So I would ask you all to make a strong statement resolution. Do not allow religion to be used as a force, as a source of violence. Disavow violence in the name of religion. Separate that out. We cannot and must not tolerate that. These are sacred religions. These are our sacred traditions. Even the universal declaration of human rights is founded in the core principles which come from all these great religions. Go back and look at it. That is a document which is serving the, the world all over, even today, even though it was adopted in 1948. And who, which is the one body which has the convening power greater than any, anything else? The United Nations. That's why we must strengthen the UN, support the United Nations, even though there are challenges, there are problems. We know that. We know that. Yeah? But that is the one convening body that we have. Now, Richard just reminded us here, even the Earth Charter, based on the principles of the religions. We've had many discussions with Stephen Rockefeller, Maurice Strong, and all the architects of the Earth Charter. We were together in Rio, uh, Rio Plus Five, Richard will tell you. And even during the prep comms, Monica, if you remember, you were bringing ribbons into the prep comms at that time in 1992. So there's a lot of history, a lot of collective wisdom here. Okay, so my, my purpose is that we cannot have religious leaders work only in isolation. That's why we created the Center for Responsible Leadership. We must equally bring the religious leaders with the political leaders, with the business leaders, the civic leaders, and look at the challenges that we have. We've seen during the COVID pandemic how vulnerability, how vulnerable we are and how we've come together to help those in most in need, right? But yet, a lot needs to be done. So do not isolate religion. Do not use religion as a tool to divide. And anywhere that we see that, it is our duty to rise up, get up, and say, we will not allow this. Disavow it. Disavow it. This is not who we are supposed to be. Human beings at the core, they are peaceful beings. They are caring beings. We are living in the most generous country on the planet. If you look around the world and see how much charity is done from America, no country comes close to that. 
right? So these small incidents of uh, people dividing us or attempting to divide us and create disharmony, we must stand strongly against it, disavow it. We must never ever allow ourselves to stoop so low as what happened on January 6th last year. Last year. That was one of the saddest moments in my life here in, in over 30 years in the USA. The sacred symbol of democracy of the world was defied. How could we allow that? We talk about banana republics. What did we do in our country here? Never again should that ever be allowed to happen. Okay. I, I, I will close by this thing of, uh, we know we just met, uh, commemorated the International Day of Remembrance of the Holocaust. Two years ago, I took the senior most Muslim leaders headed by Dr. Alisa, the secretary of the Muslim World League, to Auschwitz with American Jewish Committee, with all the Jewish leaders. There were over 60 Muslim leaders. It was a Friday afternoon. And together, now the Imam will see, they got down there and offered Salat. They prayed there at the site of the 200 meters from the gas chambers where so many Jewish people and others perished systematically, systematically. And this was done by human beings. I, 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 I really don't even wish to call them animals because it will be an insult to the animals. Okay. This was this human and we must come together and not allow people to abuse religion and the name of religion commit such atrocities. We must come together and be united, united together. We have our challenges, we have our problems. Let's come together and find solutions to them. Remember, one of the fundamental principles of democracy is civility. And when you come into a democracy, it is all about compromise. But it seems to me that we have lost, ah, difficult to say, the spirit of compromise has been compromised. This is what has happened. So that we, 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 we just look at somebody, if you don't agree, you're my enemy. Okay, that is never how a democracy works. Democracy is about always compromising and in incremental small steps advancing to see what is in the best interests of the nation. So people of faith, together with our political leaders, business leaders, get up, rise and say, we will not allow January 6th to ever happen again. We will not allow it. And we must never allow that. And anybody who tries to divide us, tell them, that is not who we are. And last I will say is, our number one goal in life is one. I will say, make that your default setting. What is that? Peace of mind. Make peace of mind your default setting. No matter how you get disturbed, come back to the default setting and you will make the wise decisions that are required in this world, in this society. So I wish you the very best. Dilip Ji and everybody else, thank you for indulging me, listening to me. I am with you all whenever you want, however you want. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, thank you so much for bringing some of my old friends who I haven't had the opportunity to meet in some time. Thank you. Thank you, Babaji. We need a short Jain prayer too. Uh, <laughs> okay. That we can easily do. Om Namo Arihantanam, Namo Siddhanam, Namo Ayriyanam, Namo Vijayanam, Namo Loe Savasahunam, Eso Panchanamo Karo Savapava Panasano, Mangla Nancha Savasing, Padmangavai Mangala. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti,
Thank you, dear Bhavaji. That was a great blessing for us. You are one of the wonderful and great leaders from uh, India and going around the globe, helping so many people. I know we all do better every single day. I see, you know, the world is changing through our actions and our friends' collaboration. This is the way it will work out. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now I'd like to invite Srimadhi Monica Villard, the NGO representative of the URI to the United Nations. She was the president of the CRNGOs at the UN. She ran a DPA conference and many, many things she did at the UN, especially peace. Peace is her major work at the UN. Dear Monica Villiard, floor is for you. Thank you, Guruji. What an honor it is. And to follow the, count, uh, the state representative and to follow Bawa Jain, it is my honor to be here with you. Um, I want to personally thank Bawa for encouraging me to get involved with the DPI NGO committee in the early 90s, which led me to follow him as the chair of the DPI NGO conference. But it also brought us into the celebration for the Gandhi King season for nonviolence. And that intertwines so much with what I do at the International, with the International Day of Peace. But World Interfaith Harmony Week has such a joyful place in my heart because I was president of the Committee of Religious NGOs in 2011. The a resolution was voted on in 2010 and celebrated at the very end of 2010 and celebrated for the first time on February and during the week of World Interfaith Harmony Week in 2011. And as the president of the Committee of Religious NGOs, we brought together a group after a day of snow and ice and we had a breakfast. So we didn't know how many people to expect. And there were 125 people. And we had leaders from UNICEF and UNFPA and the Department of Public Information join us at that breakfast with ambassadors and religious NGOs. It was a simple breakfast. And because of that start, the Committee of Religious NGOs always knew about World Interfaith Harmony Week to hear about it being presented in the New York State Legislature. That call to action to bring this kind of importance into a broader spectrum is what we heard this morning to set this state for this month's celebration. So I take that as a special place to add prayers today for World Interfaith Harmony Week, not only being a part of what we do online, but what we do in our community, whether it's the action to for volunteerism, the call to prayers. Harmony is such an important, important thing for us to consider at this time of just discordance. I, it is a time that we have not been coming together to hear the whole. We hear certain notes. We are being called into harmony. And this particular UN resolution uses words that you don't find in UN resolutions usually. It calls on the love of God or the love of good for our neighbors. It brings into us the golden rule. We must think of one another, not just our note, but how we make a symphony, how we make a broader, beautiful new tune. We are being called into, um, let's reset our mind. I love that, Bawa, um, to reset it for peace of mind. We are being called to reset, to help bring harmony to this world. And I know that each of you are here today because you wanna to be a part of that. And you are. 
your very spirit, your very commitment, your prayers, your actions. You are helping us galvanize the energy, not just for World Interfaith Harmony Week, but for how we go forward. We are being called into a new time and we must live into it with the love of God, with the love of, with the love of good, not just for ourselves or for old history's sake or for whatever we need. We need to think of the whole. We must think of our planet, of our water, of our lands, of our indigenous peoples who are still in places that are, I think of the Amazon that just had a recent piping, pipe break in um, Ecuador. We must protect our sacred land and we must hold and bring that love of God through us to protect our planet, to protect our communities, water systems, and help us build cooperation as we step forward into a new way to recognize that some of our systems are built on prejudice. We need to change those. We need to address those. We can no longer live without loving all of our neighbors. We must address this horrible loss, particularly of young people because of drugs. We don't need a war. We need a new loving environment and a new way of thinking of our public health. It should not divide us. The health of one is the health of all. So it is in our unity. It is in our harmony. But our harmony is there just like these beautiful peace lights show a rainbow on, on my little screen. I hope others are seeing it at the same time. The difference is the way we need to look at our world. We are not the same, but we are certainly not alone. And we are certainly deeply connected to the ground, to the water, and to the ethers above. So I offer a prayer of protection for our peace of mind as we gather here today to really hold our divine spark in a new way, a new way of offering that old fashioned term, love, commitment, action, let us be the hands of the divine as we reach out in sacred gatherings to harmonize as much as we can to protect our planet, to protect our communities, to protect our democracy, but to protect that deep connection that runs from the divine through all of nature, and that we are being called to live on the earth in a way that can harmonize that which is above, that which is below in us and reach out to others. I just thank you Guruji for calling us together, for being here to open World Interfaith Harmony Week and Month. Thank you Guruji. And to really call us into action to do one thing and um, report back to Guruji so he can report back to all of us what you did to harmonize yourself or your community or outreach. And I want to invite you to another event on Saturday night for those in the East Coast. We are taking the World Interfaith Harmony Week World Peace Flag Ceremony that was done in the General Assembly um, Baba was at the first one. Um, and we are replaying that to pray for peace and harmony and throughout the world. And we're adding prayers at seven o'clock Eastern time. I 
Guruji will have the link today to share. I want to thank you for adding your prayers, your actions, your being to this event, to World Interfaith Harmony Week. Thank you, Guruji. You always bring people together in new and special ways. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Thank, thank you, Monica. That was a beautiful message. I, I know we had to go 27 more days. <laughs> <laughs> we never give up. Even if one person will continue our work. So, so like uh, last, uh, last June, we had 30 days yoga celebration. And even I ne never did like uh, online 30 days. It was a challenging one, but it was a colorful. Yeah? So let us see. Now we'll have a celebration. Uh, Srimadhi is Tanu Varma from Punjab. She's going to bless us with her bhajan. Thereafter, we'll invite all the religious leaders. Tanu Varma, glory for you. Namaste from India, everybody. Myself, Tanu Verma, devotional singer and spiritual speaker, serving mankind with my devotional concepts and spiritual sessions with the grace of God. I am so delighted to appear on 37th World Interfaith Festival and I really thank Guru Dilip Chi from New York for inviting me here. I would like to greet all the NGO representatives and to all the spiritual leaders present here from all faiths and denominations. For me, singing is my devotion. Singing is my faith. So let's continue and let's begin with today's celebration. Believe me, only he is the creator and only he is the destroyer. So have faith in that divine energy which resides in each and every one of us. मारने वाला है मरना बचाने वाला है मरना मारने वाला है मरना बचाने वाला है मरना Just listen carefully each and every word which includes truths of life Thank you. 
then thereafter sister Celine from India so uh, up, upcoming speakers please keep it on time otherwise we may delay more time okay so jo Johnny Carl is a NGO representative of the Cosmos Associates at the United Nations and she part of the uh, uh, unity earth and more involved with the spiritual groups and religious group at the united nation long time friend uh, johnny kali flores for you 
Thank you, Guruji. Hello to old friends. Hello to new friends here. And I'm just, it's so wonderful to pick up after the last message about that, that place inside of us. Because when I think of interfaith harmony, I think of that common essence, that noble seed that lives in each of us. As 12th century Christian mystic Meister Eckhart wrote, he said, the royal seed in us is more than a seed. It is a living fountain that will not be turned off. The divine seed and the divine source cannot be extinguished or put out. The flame that ignites us, the spark of our soul, is an eternal flame. Noble seed requires a noble soil to grow in. So when I read that quote, I think of a question. If every sentient being is a noble seed, then how do we create the personal and the cultural soil to bring every seed to its fullest fruition? Every sentient being has its place in the divine unfolding of the universe, not just as a physical being, but as a soul, as a royal seed who is sparked by an eternal flame. We can put all the elements of an apple into a lab dish, but we can't make an apple because we don't have the metaphysical capacity to spark that life pulse that makes life live. So Eckhart wasn't just talking about seeds of eggs and sperm, he was talking about what Tagore, the Hindu mystic, called the life throb of ages dancing through our blood. The life throb of ages dancing through our blood. I love that image. That He's referring to that primal pulse of God. I like to think of it more in a vernacular term. I think of it as mojo, that energy, that pulse, that seed that's unique in each of us, that's common to all of us. As Monica said, that the love of good, seeking peace of mind, desiring world harmony, those kinds of things, those are the noble seeds, that's the noble DNA in each of us. And I know that our mojo flows the way that love goes, the way that love makes these seeds grow. But they also need good soil. And soil is like the culture, just like, like a culture in a lab dish will grow some things and it won't grow others. The kind of soil we have as a culture and as individuals really depend on, um, that really makes the difference of what grows. Will our soil grow justice and compassion or will it grow violence and corruption? Does it grow militarism or does it sustain peacefulness? Does it make sure the kids go to bed safe, fed, and warm, or doesn't it? That really comes down to values and cultural values as a collective, but also personally. And cultures are made up of, of individuals. So I want to go into a meditation in a moment, but I want to talk first about why we meditate. We meditate to get into that deeper inner culture of honesty, clarity, well-being, happiness, into the domain of consciousness. And consciousness is individual and it's collective, but it, they're, they're interdependent because the more we develop our individual consciousness, the more we understand that we are unified as one web of life. And coming together to celebrate World Interfaith Harmony Week reminds us that our unity is not something to be achieved or fought for or sought after or tried for. Our unity is just what's so. It's something to wake up to, something to unveil, because it is just so. Celebrating World Interfaith Harmony Week brings us together to fan that indwelling noble flame. So I'd like to, to really touch into that together by, by meditating just for a moment. So please get comfortable. Close your eyes if that's comfortable. And feel into the light that flows in, out, through, and around us. Breathe with the primordial light of spirit that knows no one faith and that permeates all faiths. Allow your consciousness to go to that universal spark of life. Breathing in and presencing yourself to the divine light, breathing out, releasing the grace of that divine light. Breathing in, feeling, experiencing, knowing the light of love. Breathing out, aware of how that light flows in, around, and through you. 
Breathing in, uplifting your consciousness into even greater sense of light. And breathing out, spreading the light of love as you see yourself occupying a future. Seeing yourself in a future where all children go to bed safe, fed, and warm. Seeing yourself in a future where the air and the water are clear. Where we recognize the true value of feelings like vitality and joy. Seeing yourself in a future where peace prevails. I'm going to ring this bell for one moment of silence to meditate on the future that you want, for you to place yourself in the ideal future. Please pray with me. I call on the one love, the one light, the one spark of spirit, God, Allah, the divine mother, that which cannot be named, the primordial light pulse that fuels the flame of our souls. We give thanks for that spark of divine light in each of us that can never be extinguished or put out. We give thanks that the light of love always calls us toward an ever more compassionate, just, joyful, and loving world. We offer gratitude for all the joys and sufferings that brought us right here, right now, to this, this historic moment of unprecedented possibilities. We give thanks for how much we light each other up when we come together in spirit, in interfaith harmony. We give thanks for the wisdom and guidance all religions and spiritual traditions bring to creating a world where all our relations are well and happy to a world where people's spirits are nourished and free, to a world where we no longer have to seek our unity because we know our unity as the natural law that it is. A world where unity is recognized as the norm and separation is understood as a call for healing. We come together in sacred circles like this to raise up the vision of the world we want to consciously cause to raise up the co-creativity that will map our way forward, to raise up the service it takes to cause visions to manifest. We come together knowing that now is a time like no other because our interdependence is supported by an interconnectedness we have never known before this moment in time. And now is the time to say a big, bold and bodacious yes to a new vision of an ever more compassionate, just, joyful and loving world. We give thanks for this historic moment of unprecedented possibilities. We give thanks for all the generations of love warriors who forged the path for us to be right here, right now. We give thanks that World Interfaith Harmony Week calls us together to forge new pathways and to renew timeless pathways toward a world that works for everyone. We release this prayer into the universe, knowing that we each go forward as the expression of divine light that lives in, of, and through us, and knowing that peace will prevail on earth. So it is. Blessed be. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Johnny Carly. That was a beautiful meditation prayer. I appreciate all of your support. Uh, I know more, more events are coming. The NGO committee also, religious committee also going to put one program. I don't know if it's 9th or 25th. Uh, we are waiting to hear from Reverend Dion. Then it's the 9th. 9th, okay. Fix it. Okay, perfect. So we'll be in touch very soon. So now i like to invite my sister, 
that is uh, that is sister selin paramundaya is a sister from the medical mission sisters she was an ngo representative at the un now she moved back to india end up in madhya pradesh where is sister and i i always mention this point that is she is the person supported us well your community to be part of the un dgc i ask letter recommendation letter to different ngos she is the person gave me i don't <laughs> want to mention other people's name <laughs> because of her hair support we have dgc accreditation uh, affiliation and the ecosoc accreditation now we have to sister selin flores for namaste guruji and my dear friends so lovely to see some of my friends monica joni kali and many others <laughs> Wish all of you have a very happy World Interfaith Harmony Week. It's a very good beginning. I was so happy to hear from Monica the history because I was also privileged to be part of the first Interfaith Harmony uh, breakfast meeting in in two thousand and eleven. So <laughs> to recall the history, um, the King. His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan requested the General Assembly to have the first week of February as the Interfaith Harmony Week annually, and unanimous and the GA unanimously approved it in October 2010. And actually, it is uh, the it is based on the Common World Initiative that is started in 2007. a uh, call for muslim and christian leaders to engage in a dialogue based on two common fundamental religious commit commandments love of god and love of the neighbor without compromising any of their own religious tenets this then was open to all people of goodwill in all religion love of common good more than ever interfaith harmony is needed in the world today the religious animosity is increasing and religion is used as a strategy to divide and rule in certain parts of the world to have religious harmony we need to know some truths as jesus said know the truth and the truth will set you free today i am speaking as an indian not as a former ngo representative at the un <laughs> do you know how the name india came about the word india derived from the indus river indus river this river was known to the ancient indians in sanskrit as sindhus and the persians as hindu which was regarded by both as a border river in the asian continent from its source in the northwestern foothills of the himalayan in tibet it flows to the indian state of jammu and kashmir and along the length of pakistan to the arabian sea people on this side of the river were simply called hindus it didn't have any uh, it had no religion attached though hinduism was the ancient religion the third millennium bc saw the rise of indus valley civilization you may have heard about harappa mohenjodaro a major urban civilization of the bronze age Indians share the same culture as Hindus and some follow the religion of Hinduism over several centuries muslim armies of muhammad bin qasim and others crossed the river to invade sindhu sindh and punjab providing a gateway to the indian subcontinent some followed islam then in ad 52 St Thomas one of the 12 disciples of Jesus came to Kerala state of India and spread Christianity I'm not going to uh, the history of any other religions India also known as Bharat in Sanskrit is the union of states and fusion of various religions cultures customs heritage etc we our India is a great nation embracing the diversity of this world 
On January 26th, India celebrated its 73rd Republic Day, the day the constitution came into effect. The preamble starts like the UN Charter, we the people. We the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Secure to all its citizens justice, liberty, fraternity. Familiar? The French Revolution? So after the independence from Britain in 1947, India chose to be the beneficiary of the West and the constitution adopted their values. Sovereign meaning, a rule of law based on the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible. Hinduism is based on caste. There is no equality, but only hierarchy as Brahmins on the top and Shudras on the bottom and Dalits even below. We Indians are proud to say, according to our constitution, all citizens are equal before the law. Now I want to tell you some unfortunate, sad facts. In 2021 alone, India witnessed 486 violent attacks on Christians. With the 39 hate crimes in the state of Karnataka alone, in the name of religious conversion. Christianity existed in India for the last 1,970 years, and it remained steady for the last 40 to 50 years, a tiny percent, that is 2.3% of the total population of India. Christians are not foreigners, but Christian citizens of India. I love all my brothers and sisters belonging to Hindu, Muslim, and other religious. But it is very sad to say the right wing Hindutva group slogan is to make India a Hindu nation. And no media will report the attacks on, on Christians, let alone take actions by the police. Why? Because they have the silent support of the political leaders. We need more dialogue among the religions. And let us hope that this initiative will provide a focal point from which all people of goodwill can recognize that the common values of all the religions, the common values we hold outweigh the differences we have, and thus providing a strong dosage of peace and harmony to their communities. So we can still live in harmony if we really understand our history and the meaning of religion, love of God and love of neighbors. I'd like to congratulate and thank our Guruji for organizing this beautiful event, one of my favorites while at the UN. Since 20, 2011, we Medical Mission Sisters and Associates without fail used to attend this beautiful program. <laughs> and even though the UN is uh, closed now, I'm in fact um, not physically, we cannot attend physically, but Guruji has opened this forum for all of us to come together and celebrate this beautiful uh, festival or the interfaith. And thank you, Guruji, for giving me this opportunity, though I'm not at the UN. Now I'm in Madhya Pradesh, freezing cold. <laughs> Let me conclude with a song, Asatoma Satkameya, meaning leaders from untruth to truth, Tamasoma Jodirgameya, leaders from darkness to light. Murtyorma Amradangamaya, lead us from death to life. So Guruji, let us sing together. Asatoma Satkamaya, Tamasoma Jodirgamaya, Murtyorma Amradangamaya. Om Shanti, may peace prevail on earth, Jai Hind. Jai Hind. This is a real interfaith. A sister from Christian community is singing or chanting a mandra from Hindu religion. This is a real <laughs> interfaith. <laughs> I, I love you brought some points. Is we have to work on a lot of things in India. Not only India, different countries too. It's a very hard for 
um, make people to understand how to behave in the society. Even if they have a certain culture or religion or ethnicity is very hard. Even I, I saw that in my own house. <laughs> so a long time, over 53 years I'm working on this one, still problems going on around around me. <laughs> so thank you, sister. I know it's a night there. I appreciate your support. Now I like to invite Sri Devi Vaidyanath Shivacharya is the director and the religious leader from the uh, Ganesh Temple. Let me see, I'm looking. Yes, I'm yes. here. Perfect, perfect. Can I go ahead? Yeah, one minute. I want to mention Ganesh Temple. That is uh, Temple Sami Bhuva. Uh, used to go and teach yoga classes every Sunday. I used to bring him there as a caretaker. Wherever he goes, I go with him. That's the way I was. So there's a great blessing. He's joining with us. Last week, we had a wonderful meeting with the president of the temple, Dr. Suma Mysurkar and Riviji and other leaders with our deputy director of the uh, Asian Affairs from the governor's office. We had a beautiful event. I'm, I'm looking forward to have the governor's support to our community in New York. All the religious community, not only Hindu community, all the religious community needs support. Without delay, I want to invite Sri Devi Vajanaraji. Glory is for you. Namaste to uh, all of you assembly here. And on behalf of uh, the Hindu community, uh, I would first uh, wish to begin uh, with a chanting of a Hindu prayer, joining everyone assembled here on this uh, auspicious day of uh, opening ceremony of the 37th uh, annual uh, World in uh, Interfaith Festival, also the celebration of uh, Interfaith Harmony Week. My prayer is going to be in uh, Sanskrit, but however, I will give a brief meaning uh, in English too. Om Bhadram Karne Bhishrunaya Madheva Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bherke Jatra Stirai Rangai East Tushteva Gumsas Tanobehi Vyashe Madheva Hitam Yadhayuhu Swastina Indro Vridhas Ravaha Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swasti Nastar Kshaw Arishthane Mihi Swasti Nobri Haspatir Dadhatu Om Shanti 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 Swasti Prajabhya Paripala Yantam Nyayena Marghena Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmane Bhyash Bamastunityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavanto Sarve Janaha Sukino Bhavanto Ayam Dharmaha Uttarotra Pavridhi Rastu. Now let me give you the meaning in English for the benefit of all those who are assembled here. Our salutation and prayer to the Supreme Almighty, Om, O God, may we hear only auspicious words through our ears. While engaged in worship, May we see only auspicious things through our eyes. While praising the God, using our strong limbs, may we enjoy a life that is beneficial to all of us. May Lord of ancient fame be auspicious to us. May the supreme all-knowing God of the earth be propitious to us. May the destroyer of evil be well disposed towards us. May preceptor of the God ensure our welfare. May all be well with mankind. May the leaders protect and lead with wisdom by keeping to the right path. May there be goodness for all those who know the earth be sacred. May all beings everywhere be peaceful and happy. Let all see, hear, and perceive only good things. 
let the cosmic energy spread across the earth and make all living beings joyful om shanti 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 it's very important that these kind of meetings are held frequently uh, as the guruji said for the unity among all the faith leaders faith traditions to hold the same spiritual values we all enjoy and benefit in this planet earth by sharing the same sun what we see in the sky also the same moon what we see on the night and same atmospheric atmospheric air that all of us breathe for oxygen and plants and animal breathe it for carbon dioxide and we use the same water available uh, in the, or blessed by the lord and the space in the whole planet is gifted to us by the god and it's all all of this are gift of god to the mankind of course in the present a uh, globalized approach let us jointly promote love kindness compassion goodness and humbleness as uh, the uh, sister previously was telling religious differences often cause uh, animosity misunderstanding still prevails due to varied spiritual traditions but let us build bridges of mutual understanding and respect by considering our common goals unity among diversity keeping this in mind i offered my humble prayer today just before all of uh, you thanks to guru ji for giving me an opportunity to offer a hindu prayer to and to also to share my views on behalf of the uh, hindu community uh, in this part of the country namaste and thank you once again and i want to mention you see the picture behind him that's the ganesh temple yes that's the first uh, temple in north america yes Th- thank you ji uh, i i'll be there in the evening with the oh. dr kang of mine today so oh, please welcome welcome we'll we'll meet thank, thank you, you. appreciate your support now now i like to invite grandmother patricia and davis from the indigenous tribe native american tribe in america she is the ngo representative for well your community for indigenous uh, issues at the united nations grandmother patricia play floor is for you thank you guru ji remember that um all of the every tribe in this country we call ourselves people or holy people and the child of the holy people and the creator within creation so i wish you all a blessed morning and um the time of the day that you are in on this mother earth everyone hear me as we celebrate living the loving way as a way of life when i say I acknowledge and have gratitude for this precious time to share precious knowledge from an indigenous lens where we all exist within the oneness of natural order law that governs us all equally in my traditional introduction I am a precious child of creator and so is everyone equally I have all my relatives my spiritual family i am born of the mississippi band of choctaw i am born to the tachitni washalchin my maternal lineage is chata the ne edashche although my paternal lineage is kia ani edashanale the holy people's language and sacred words the ne azad are affirmations the affirmations are in the container the context of the natural order it is a fact that we are all born 
spiritually holy and in within spiritual holiness and wholeness. February is the time of birth of the baby eagle. We call this um, Atsa Biyaj. It is the remembering and awakening to the fundamental basis of our spiritual equality, Hojojik Ehina. And there is a, a place within our um, head where the whir hair twirls, where we're where that eagle plume is existing as a symbol of this spark of divinity and inherent sovereignty and our in inherent holiness and sacredness within us and around us. When we um, talk about cre creation, we're existing in co-creative power. Each of us have this co-creative power within us to have power with each other. And this is from our own sacred self within our sacred place in the universe of oneness. That's the word we use. We say, hojo, it's all encompassing and no one can exist outside of or separate. And so I'd like to acknowledge my late father, my Dene father who gave me a life task of undoing thinking that caused so much violence and suffering to our people, the original people of this land. And um, what I'm saying today is, um, is not um, a conversion process. It does not require a take away and replace or take away and supplant. It is um, the natural order laws are um, what historically happened to us, uh, conversion to take our indigenous people out of our sacred place and our sacred place in the universe and replace it and supplant it by um, belief in a deficient self-image. So today I'm affirming, which means uh, to remember and to reawaken. Thus, I have traveled by invitation to 10 different countries to educate, and I'm grateful for this time, beginning this affirmation with, from in our eternal self, in our eternal now. Kudo hojo do We're walking between Mother Earth and Father Sky. Um, and uh, I'm switching back and forth and making sure too also uh, how, how best to simplify and describe in English to you the natural order that we all exist in. In our, in our holistic holographic holistic self, I might even say, which is within the natural order and, the, and our individuality within the whole. It is with creator's thinking that I think. It is with creator's words that I speak. It is with these corn pollen words that I am blessed. It is with creator's body that I go it is with creator's legs that I, it is with creator's feet that I walk. And the phrase, the affirmation, is equally applied, inclusive language, cross-cultural, intergenerational, and can be translated into any language is um, there is love, there is balance within me, there's harmony. Balance and living harmony within my communication and peace within my relationships and beauty in my environment. There's joy within my heart and within the heart of the symbol of our heart, the, the fire of life, within the web of life in, the, in each of our homes 
and therefore um, these phrases uh, that beauty resides within us and we must see the beauty and then we can we can see the love and feel and express and bring that to fruition and manifestation therefore um, we always in four directions in the natural order the east south west north the sunrise noon evening midnight the spring summer fall winter it's all clockwise and also the child the youth the elder the child the youth the parent and the adult and then the elder and the grandparent and then white shell is white people and turquoise we're saying is um red people but turquoise is the sky and then the west is uh, abalone shell for the asian people and obsidian and jet is north for black people and that's how we're existing and born into the sacred circle of life is that we are uh, forever eternally existing within this natural order where there is only love and peace existing within us and around us um, a should thank you to all of my relatives and my spiritual family thank you grandmother that was a beautiful prayer and you brought the point of love Sami Bo used to say, begin the day with love, spend the day with love, fill the day with love, end the day with love. That's the way to God. Nothing else. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. So ne next, we have three more speakers. Uh, we have 10 minutes delay. Sorry for that. Right? So let us see, we celebrate. What are happening, happening. So I'd like to invite Reverend Dr. Frank Hoffman. He's the founder and executive director of the Dual Gates Foundation and the advisor of the value community, longtime friend is, uh, I'll say in our circle, he'll be the long lasting religious leader and uh, uh, educationalist. In, in the religious field. Dr. Frank Hoffman, floor is for you. Thank you very much, Guruji. I'm, I'm deeply honored at your invitation and surprisingly more delighted to be here than I expected, honestly speaking. Uh, I have gained a tremendous amount from everybody who's spoken. It's been a real, not only education for me, but also a, uh, an upliftment, a spiritual upliftment for me. This is uh, a meeting of professionals, but uh, I felt the spirit of God present in uh, all who's spoken. And I'm very grateful uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to thank you in particular, Guruji. I, as I was thinking of, of how, of yesterday, I was thinking of the impact of your life and the trajectory of your life. And I, I said that uh, you increasingly awaken spiritual life in more and more people growing outward from a personal Zen, harmonizing humility intimate knowledge of oneness and always acting fully. So it's, a, it's an incremental and steady and true expansion of spirituality. It isn't jumping in at some place and taking command. Uh, so all of us gathered here are an extension of your tireless effort and commitment to a world that transcends religious distinction, but doesn't violate or deny any religious commitment. It's, it's a great work and it's really manifest here today. I want to, uh, I included in my comments to congratulate Bawa Jain because we're celebrating World Interfaith Harmony Week, but that 
Uh, that came 10 years after his monumental achievement at the Millennial World, Sum World Peace Summit of religious uh, leaders and spiritual leaders. So 10 years ahead of time. Uh, but uh, I thought to myself, now I've heard from so many, from Monica and others, that everyone has held the ground for a long, long time before this special time has come upon us. Um, I, I had some words to thank the Jordanian leadership, King Abdullah and uh, Prince Ghazi uh, bin Mohammed, uh, whose words and insights uh, fueled and infused the King's uh, proposal to the General Assembly that was ultimately accepted. But we've heard a lot about that from other speakers. I'm gonna jump over that uh, and then just, and just introduce that in my thoughts today, I'd like to introduce just two main thoughts for our consideration today, the, or two main words. And at the very end, I'll add a third, but the two words are patience and forgiveness, patience and forgiveness. By way of patience, uh, I would ask, when was the United Nations founded? I'm sure many here on this call are able to give an answer to that question. It was founded in 1945. What is the mission of the United Nations? I'm sure again, many people can answer that. The very first words of the preamble, we the peoples of the United Nations are determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The very first words. Bawa Jain's fantastic Millennium Summit of Religious Leaders happened in 2000. That's 55 years later, 55 years later. And if people are honest in the room today, we will know that the mere thought of religion was all but verboten in the United Nations. And yet how could anyone imagine or let, let alone spend decades presuming to work toward the end of the scourge of war and not involve um, history's greatest resource for the end of war, which is the great spiritual traditions. That's where we learn about uh, self-control, about forgiveness and kindness and love. We don't learn it from economic, we don't learn it from political science. They have different concerns and important concerns. But in part, it's the religious community itself that kept that allowed the secular community of the UN to keep us at bay because they were afraid that we were the single most divisive and, and conflicting community on the earth and they didn't want us around. They were trying to make peace and they didn't want to invite religious people around. But things happened sooner or later, it happened. I myself went to the United Nations school at four years old and what graduated uh, the end of my primary and secondary school, the United Nations school. I've been involved with the UN all my life. For decades, for decades, you couldn't mention religion in that community. The closest, the little bridge was the word values. The closest you could come was word values. It was a little kind of permeated bridge to suggest the possibility of spiritual phenomena. And then if you mentioned values, the ambassadors would grow ashen and look left and look right to make sure nobody saw you walk into their office. But look at us today. The United Nations has become a great champion of interreligious affairs, a great home of interreligious affairs. And this is what I mean when I said the first word of my thoughts today, patience. Have patience, be patient. On the word forgiveness, um, do you hear people at the United Nations saying, you know, I finally got it. I finally got it thanks to people like Bawa and, and uh, Monica. At last I've woken up and we were wrong. We should have worked hard at have. You'll never hear it. You'll never hear it. No, just won't. And this is what I'm talking about forgiveness. We don't have to press. We don't have to press our colleagues and friends uh, to admit they were wrong or why did you do or something. When we've arrived, we've arrived. Uh, the New York Times was, was a great champion of Stalin, a huge champion of Stalin. 
their Moscow office guy who wrote all the glowing reports of Stalin and communism was recommended by the New York Times to receive a Nobel Prize and a Pulitzer Prize. Would the New York Times today write glowing reports on the greatest mass murder in the history of humankind, the greatest? I, I hope not. But we, do, do we find the New York Times writing, we were wrong, we got it wrong? No, we don't. And so this is what I mean by forgiveness. Don't we don't have to press our friends and colleagues. We have to encourage and support. Allow us to become what we've become. And for all the wrong that the history has, done, has been passed, I'm sure I have my wrongs that I should confess and repent. And so this is what I mean by, uh, as we begin this week of seeking genuine interreligious relations, patience and forgiveness. Be patient as people like Bawa and Monica and uh, you Guruji, working with one person at a time, working on the street, one person at a time. And now you have people of great magnitude singing your praises and having been uplifted and spiritually educated by you. It's patience. And people allow us, allow each of us to become what we've become. We don't have to press. And the final thing I'll say, and that's the third word that I didn't mention at the outset, repentance and honesty. We don't have to press others, but it wouldn't hurt if we've been wrong to say we've been wrong. That means we trust God, repent, trust God. And in this way, each one of us will become free. That's how we become free. That's how we step into our new shoes and our new clothes and our new knowledge and our new enlightenment. We don't need to be afraid to have been wrong. This is our path. And free people, honestly, if I may say, only truly free people will be the uh, engines of peace. But that takes the courage to be honest in front of the God of all, and then to, and then to be born new. With that, Guruji, I'd like to thank everyone for time and attention and for allowing me to be part of this incredible and wonderful event. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Frank Hoffman. That was a beautiful message. I love it. And evening, we'll have a wonderful event in Flushing. Yes. We have called after the program. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll offer our prayers for our brothers. Thank you. So next, we, we have two more speakers. Next one is Reverend Susan Stefanacci Makom. She's an advisor for Value Community. And long time interfaith minister, she does so many weddings, ceremonies, and numerous other clergy work in New York. And she was trained by Rabbi Joseph Escalupraman, where I serve as a trustee at the All Faith Seminary. Reverend Susan, the floor is for you. Namaste. Thank you, Guruji. And, you know, I look at each and every one of you, different religions, different cultures from different countries, and my heart sings. My heart sings. This is the symphony of humanity. How glorious. Uh, Guruji, I have to thank you and honor you for, you know, you've began this interfaith work. You, you, you were born into an interfaith family, began in India, and you came here to this country 20 years ago. And what you've achieved is astounding. And you bring us all together and we learn from each other. I learned from each and every one of you. And I bow to the light of the divine in each and every one of you. I want to begin with uh, something Mahatma Gandhi said in 1928. He said, I came to the conclusion long ago that all religions were true, 
and also that all had some error in them. Think about that, how important that is. All religions are true, but the humility to say, but each has some error in them. And whilst I hold by my own, I should hold others as dear as Hinduism. So as much as we love our own tradition, we should hold others as dear. So we can only pray if we are Hindus, not that a Christian should become a Hindu, not that a Christian should become a Jew, but that our innermost prayer should be a Hindu, should be a better Hindu, a Muslim should be a better Muslim, and a Christian a better Christian. So that's the interfaith message from 1928 from Mahatma Gandhi, that we become better in our faith. I want to show something. Uh, let's see if I can find, yes, I'm going to show this. Do you all see that? Rabbi Joseph Gelberman uh, came with the interfaith menorah. So the whole concept of this was that the center life represents the, the light of the divine. And that from that one light of God, each of the world's religions gets lit. And I'm also an initiated Sufi and founded by Hazrat Inaya Khan. And he in 1928 came up with the universal worship service, 1928, where you light one candle for the one God by whatever name, and you light a candle in honor of the light of each religion. And the last candle is for religions yet to come. And I was thinking, I was just thinking of what Dr. Jane said. I don't know if he's still on this service, but I had written this down that each interfaith seminary, each interfaith organization affirms the set of values of love, of peace, of harmony, what we are talking about now. And that is very important. But Guruji, I was thinking if you and Dr. Jane, Dr. Kaufman, um, if everyone here would come together and in addition to, that's the interfaith motto, right? Never instead of, in addition to, I think maybe the world needs a set of interfaith commandments. In addition to principles, for example, thou shall not kill in the name of religion. Uh, it is blasphemy. It is evil upon evil. It's misguided. Thou shall not do harm due to someone's religious or spiritual beliefs or non-beliefs. Thou shall never disparage another for their religious or spiritual principles. Thou shalt speak up against religious intolerance, even and especially within one's own religion. I was born, raised Christian. If I hear someone saying an anti-Semitic remark, it is very important that I speak up. It's very important, like a, a Muslim leader, to, to speak up against the violence being perpetrated. It's very, and that thou shall never claim that one's religion or spiritual practice is superior to another. And thou shall not force conversions. I, again, I think it's very, very important that we begin with spiritual ideas of love and beauty and peace, affirming the divine and the goodness of each creature of God. But I think we also, maybe we're at a time in the world where we have to say the top religious leaders 
absolutely no violence in the name of religion. Never. And then we will really have interfaith peace. Um, I was raised Christian, so maybe instead of a prayer, I'm going to say one of my favorite stories from the Bible. In the Gospel of Luke, everybody knows the Good Samaritan story, but maybe not all the uh, non-Christians do. Uh, a lawyer, someone who knew the law, was testing Jesus. And he says to him, teacher, rabbi, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, what is eternal life? It is life of love and peace. It's the kingdom of heaven, which lies within. And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? How do you read it? And Jesus answered in a very Jewish way, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And that last bit is in every religion. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live always. You will have eternal life. But then the lawyer, perhaps trying to trick him or justify himself said, who is my neighbor? And I love this because to me, this is truly interfaith, intercultural. And Jesus responds with a story, a parable. This is how Jesus taught. He said, a certain man, he doesn't say what kind of man, a certain man is going from Jerusalem to Jericho and he falls among robbers who strip him and beat him and leave him half dead. And by chance, a certain priest is passing along, going that way. And when the priest saw him, he passed to the other side, meaning not paying attention to him. Now the priest in those days was the holy of holies. They were the only people allowed to go into the tabernacle. So that is the highest religious person. Then comes a Levite and who is the second level of religious people. And he came to a place and saw him and he also passed to the other side, leaving the guy half dead. And then a certain Samaritan now, a Samaritan, there was a hatred between the Jews and the Samaritan. So is he saying someone that is your enemy? He passed by and he was moved with compassion and he came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine. He set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii money, gave it to the host and said to him, take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will pay you when I return. And then Jesus says, now which of these three do you think seemed to be a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? The lawyer answers, he who showed, showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. And so my prayer, and I think everyone here has this in their heart for interfaith harmony and infinite, infinite interfaith peace and peace for the world is us to show mercy and compassion to the stranger to who we perceived as an enemy, for there are no enemies. So that is my prayer. Amen. Thank and you, thank Lord, Lord and Susan. You brought the interfaith menorah to yeah. a wonderful event. That is very important. Our rabbi promoted life around the globe, trained a lot of reverence and people with the doctorates in interfaith studies. Those who like to join for 
becoming a reverend in interfaith studies or a, get a master's or doctor's plus go to all faith seminary uh, international dot or or just call me you can join so now i want to go to the next speaker the last speaker not the i only for today <laughs> but we are con continuing our programs tomorrow always and that is imam arif askik is also interfaith minister studied at the all faith seminary and currently is running a common world alliance clergy interfaith organization and ministry and spiritual descendants of our humanity he is running uh, imam arif glory is god please أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم which means in the name of God most gracious most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته which means peace and the blessings of God Almighty be unto you all my dear brother Guruji Dr. Dilip Kumar thank you for honoring me with this beautiful invitation to this beautiful event and 37th annual World Interfaith Festival and first week, first day of the World Interfaith Harmony Week celebration. So this is something, uh, again, to say this is a great honor to be here today for, for this occasion. And as well, uh, I would like to say that I'm bringing to you and to all of you greetings from our both organizational governing teams at Kamwood Alliance Clergy Interfaith Organization and Ministry and Spirituality Center for Humanity. And my honor is to be alumni of All Faith Seminary International from New York. And my greetings to all of them, faculty, staff, administrators, and this year students may god bless them all with best success in your studies and leadership i am from europe from country of bosnia and herzegovina and been in america for 24 years it is honor dr guruji to meet with you in person and share hotel room with you to be a roommate and the first our meeting in our life and that is what um, makes me to learn how people spiritually be, can be connected just like biological brothers. And uh, we are just like in brotherly love. <laughs> so this is something that really uh, cannot thank you enough for friendship and for your leadership as well. The man who I, if you not take me wrong, I can call you like a saint, spiritual saint who brought this world around people together today and to celebrate the entire week, our lives. Uh, actually, without interfaith understanding, there is no life. Because uh, we are today in this uh, event just like flowers in one garden, every flower have a different fragments. So every one of you have a different thought, but our goal of all of us is peace and unity. Uh, I made some notes, but I will not repeat notes from each of you, but as uh, Dr. Bound Jane said that we must come together and to unite. Without that, there is no sustainability in the world. We have to unite. And also uh, that Sister Monica Villard mentioned golden rule, without loving your neighbor as yourself, also there is no life. We cannot sustain in our neighborhood by ourselves. And uh, as Dr. Frank, uh, Kaufman mentioned about repentance, repentance and honesty. Repent and 
trust God, that is a religion. That is what God asks us for. We don't have to do nothing more. If we forgive those who hurt us sometimes in life, we have a disagreement, which means, which means that is not hurting. We just disagree. But let's learn how to agree with disagree and move forward, move forward in our life. And also the important is to love yourself. If you no love yourself, uh, you cannot love your neighbor, regardless who he is. We have to learn how to love ourselves and thank ourselves for doing good. Even when in the morning we get up, say, thank you, God, for waking me up so I can see this daylight, I can see Sunday. So as uh, Sister Reverend Susanna Makeup said about violence in religions, there is no space for violence among us. People creating violence among themselves. God did not make us to be violated. He made us to love one another as we love ourselves. So I really appreciate all of this. And this is great teaching of these uh, speakers today. Uh, and uh, I would say from Islamic point of view, from Quran, as I've been asked about the prayer, so I will say what Quran said for entire humanity, not only for Muslims, as that is a, a, a book revealed to for Muslims, but as you look that all God's scriptures are for all people. So we should not uh, privatize those books, Quran, Bible, Torah, New Statement, Old Statement, or New Testament, Old Testament, we should not privatize it, but we should follow it as we are in it, as we made that as a story, as make it as your own, there is only teaching us love. But this is a chapter of Quran, and we say Surah number 103, 103, it's called Al-Asr, or the time through the ages. Only three verses, but dedicated to entire humanity, where God says, by time, surely man is in loss, except such as those who have faith and do righteous deeds and join together in the mutual teaching of truth and of patience and perseverance. This is about, I mentioned this chapter because of what we were talking today and I heard from you, that is only love, peace, unity, repentance, and trust in God. And one more uh, chapter I will read to you without using my own words. I will read in Arabic and translate it to you. That is, we call it opening, first chapter of Quran, Al-Fatiha, or the op opening chapter, only seven sentences, verses. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ورحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين In the name of Allah the All Merciful the Ever Merciful Praise be to Allah the Lord Cherisher and Sustainer of the Worlds the All Merciful the Ever Merciful the possessor of the day of judgment, you only we worship and only your help we seek. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your mercy, not of those against whom you have sent your wrath, nor of those who have erred and become lost. Amen. Brother, Dr. Guruji, thank you again for having me here. Uh, that is blessing to be among those beautiful faces and to hear, uh, to smell their fragments as of flowers, to, to hear their words of guidance. Thank you again and God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Peace be on you. Thank, thank you, Imam, for waiting until <laughs> two hours to get your chance <laughs> and the wonderful prayer. 
so due to late time we have to wind up very fast i have another meeting at 12 o'clock after 20 minutes so we'll move our uh, song to another day uh, i just got a message from in uh, in agupta okay uh restanu varma so you can join another day for a song and i'll ask uh, Reverend Dr. Tekka Nagagaki do a short prayer in Buddhist tradition, then we'll wind up, wind up for today. So the same link we'll use for upcoming days. Then I, I remember when I went to Israel and Egypt for yoga festivals, Baba Jain told me, oh, there's a headquarters of Baha'i faith in Israel. You have to visit that place. I went there. It's a beautiful place. I saw my uh, colleague Carl Morel, he's the NGO representative at the UN and the past president of the CR NGOs at the UN. He is in the meeting. So I, I saw uh, Abhiramananda from um, another organization, then Krabal Singh, and let's see a few more people. Anyway, all of you will get a chance. We have opening for tomorrow and 4th, 5th and 7th. Sunday will be even uh, with the South American group. And Nagagag is going to lead a program on 3rd of February. So TK Nagagaki, please do the prayer. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope you can hear me okay. And thank you, Anna. First of all, I just I prepare a little bit Happy New Year to everyone. First of all, you know the Xin Yen Kualu in Chinese, I believe. Agemashite Omedo gozaimasu. And it's a special day. I believe a lot of Chinese temple has a celebration today too. And I just do a little New Year's writing in a way for you too. So that's why I just wanted to share a little bit of card for you. So wishing you the Happy New Year. And uh, also uh, it's the, well, all the Chinese characters that I wrote, so I don't know what you can tell, but then the first line, the Happy New Year. And then this is the ear of the tiger. So there's a, something to do with the tiger in this the second line, uh, which is the wind <laughs> follow the tiger and uh, the crowd follow the dragon. So anyway, that's a phrase. I don't know what you mean. You can think about it or meditate about it. Uh, what does that really mean? And then the, uh, the, this line, one, two, three, fourth line, small character is uh, uh, Namo Amitabhu, uh, which is Amitabha in uh, infinite light and life for the prayer. And then that's my name. <laughs> so anyway, so that's greeting to you all. And uh, I think this is uh, the, the mind of pure Ami. Uh, normally in the new year, the, what we do in Buddhist is uh, day before we ring the 108 bells, so which represent 108 bright passions, include like greed, anger, and all those uh, mind that, that uh, was sort of like disturb us in one way. And so kind of uh, we try to clarify what do you call it, clean the, all those uh, brine passions, everything. And then next day today with a little suns and uh, so bring the new life. So, so by, we, with, with reflection and then we just decide to go to the next step. So, so that's the, uh, the stand for. And I was really happy to see still, this is my garden actually. And then I was, I was going to sit there and do something, but too cold. <laughs> it looks nice, but then too cold. So this is the kind of feeling that I have today for the new year. And uh, so, so like uh, sitting here and so you see all the snow covered. And, uh, but at the same time, the sun comes in. You know, all the difficulties that we may have, like a snow represent, but yet, you know, sun comes in uh, this New Year's Day. <laughs> so it's a great, great feeling with that. And today seems like a Baba Jain's day. And <laughs> so I should say just the one thing for Baba Jain, I guess he brought me to the interface at the interface center of New York, but then the, he was uh, 20. 
28 or almost 28 years ago that I, I just met him. So have been long, long, long time uh, friendship that, that I have with him. So I appreciate it. And uh, so since everybody talking about Bawajin, I have to, I guess, seems. But uh, Guruji, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, uh, so the, so I hope you will see, see you, everyone. And then the, uh, November, I mean, <laughs> February 3rd as well. But uh, today, uh, I'd like to ring the, really simply the bell, you know, that because with that, uh, this snow melting, that feel really fresh, and clear your mind, everything, you know, what we are, words is something that we can say, but then when you're sitting in a, you know, the nature, you don't really need a word. <laughs> so we, we heard all the words, which is very valuable too, but at the same time, it's very important to have the quiet moment you know, the meditation is not just a quietly, but then it is like by making very quiet, you are ready to challenge yourself and then challenge to our world that we are living. And so it's, a, you know, bringing the energy accumulate to yourself. So, so what I would like to do is a three bell. One is bell for past, one is bell for present, and one is bell for future. So whatever you like to meditate with it, uh, please do so. And uh, I'm sure this bell should be last pretty well and then reach out to your mind and the bottom of your mind. Peace to you all. Thank you, Guruji, and Happy New Year to you all. Thanks. Thank you, PK. That was a beautiful short prayer. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see the third, February third event. We'll end up with our uh, I want to thank everyone joining. This is the 12th year World Interfaith Harmony Week celebrations opening in our group. And I'm happy you spend two and a half hours in this opening ceremony. Your dedication, patience, and wisdom. I appreciate all of you. We'll end up with our uh, peace, peace song. Let there be peace, Lord, uh, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace, Lord, uh, the peace that was meant to be. Be God as our parent, we are family. Let me walk with my neighbor. In perfect harmony, let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and leave each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace or and let it begin with me. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow, 9 a.m. New York time, 7.30 in India. So those who didn't get a chance to speak today, please join. Let me know. I'll put your name and photo on the flyer, either tomorrow or 4 or 6 or 7. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone.